Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Aquas Wonder. My name is Nicole Mario and this is the DIY AIO Aquarium. So this is the aquarium that we are going to build. What you are going to see through this video is the stuff that I filmed three years ago. Uh, it was way before that I was uh, doing YouTube video. So and it's still really bad. So that's why I took the footage uh, because I filmed a lot of stuff. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I think it's worth uh, to show you how I built this aquarium. Uh, the only thing that I changed you're going to see is the the, the top. And uh, other than that, honestly, that aquarium worked flawlessly. So that's why I wanted to, to sh make a video about it and to show you how, how to make it. And also during this video, I, I will give you some tips, uh, what I learned during this uh, process. Uh, what we could maybe do a little bit better, even if like it worked really well. Uh, and I will give you some uh, link uh, that's where I bought the stuff uh, on Amazon. Uh, so we can do the same st uh, the same thing with the same uh, material. So let's do it. All right. So tip number one: before even having the cram, you must know where you're going to put the cram. So I have an IKEA stand, and uh, back in the day. I thought that I was going to put like fresh water on the left and the, the salt water uh, on the right and uh, it was actually a good concept the only thing that was uh, not really cool is the fact that the salt water will just affect the, the wood, the organic stuff and maybe like the metallic stuff so be really careful because if you have a salt water aquarium it will damage the sand because they are going to just splash water somewhere it's guaranteed 100% so just be careful with that so you can see the damage that has been done on the, the sun and it's like a MDF wood uh, from EKA and uh, yeah it will just uh, be wrecked. And also another thing, over the, a long period of time the, the weight of the water, if you have like a stand like this, it's like a cheap if I can say that, uh, it will just shift the, the balance of the, the level of the, the, the water. So think about that, if you have something like it's more like a steel or something that like metal really solid, it will usually remain the same level. So, so take that in consideration. Uh, my ground is actually made of wood and uh, when I press with my feet, I can feel the, the compression of the, the, the ground. Uh, so just be careful with that, take that in consideration. Tip number two. Like you're super excited, you bought your aquariums like low iron glass and like rimless and stuff like that and when you're like, oh, I'm gonna clean it, just be careful. If you follow my series of episodes of Nano, Comp Nano Reef Competition, uh, so uh, just be careful about that. And the second thing that you need to do, you need to test your aquarium if it's waterproof or not. So I like to play on the edge, I put a lot of water, it's 100. 20 liters, so I put 121 liter because I like to be on the edge and just like that. Everybody knows you never go full retard. What do you mean? So just test your aquarium if it's waterproof or not. And you can see like on the bottom it just like a leak of water, but it's, it was I couldn't dry it in, so just my my aquarium was super fine. Alright, so now it's time to do some preparation and we need to buy some equipment and everything that I'm going to show you, I put the link in the description, it's Amazon link, it's affiliate link. So the first thing that you need is of course a separator, an acrylic sheet. So I have this acrylic sheet and there's a black one and there's a clear one. So of course it's not super beautiful to see the equipment behind, so having a clear acrylic like that, a sheet like that, um, I do not recommend that. So so let's go with the black acrylic sheet. This is a three millimeters uh, thick and it worked for my cram. My cram is a 30-ish uh, gallons, uh, it worked. But honestly, you can see a little bit like it, it kind of bend, but just to be like a little bit more safe, uh, you can go with a five millimeter. Of course, the, the press will go way up if the thickness is uh, larger. So. Uh, depending on your budget. So acrylic sheets, they are black, hide the equipment, buy that. So I personally bought uh, two sheets of uh, black acrylic uh, sheet like that. Um, just in case like I do a mistake, like you can see I have like a little accident over here. So just in case I have an accident um, and I have to redo it myself, I have like some backup just in case. So you can buy a little bit more than you need, it's always a good thing. And here another example, uh, this is uh, another separator that I have made uh, with the laser cut. And you can see it's, there's a reflection of it like this. 
if you go on the other side, this is a matte side. So if you go with the matte, so it avoids a little bit more the, the reflection but you still have because there is water inside, um, it will cause uh, way more if you have a matte side. But if it doesn't bother you to, uh, to have like a reflection, uh, it's fine, go with that. And by the way, this is, you can see the, the thickness. This, uh, this is the difference. So at some point you're going to have to cut uh, the acrylic sheet so uh, you have to use the, the right tool I've seen some people using like a cutter like that like for cobbles uh, not the good thing I've seen other people try to use the, the scissor again <laughs> not the good thing um, I see some people using like the heat gun and just like it melt the acrylic is you're going to have to do a mess with that. A tool that I use a lot is the Dural. Uh, it worked pretty well, I'd say, to cut the, the acrylic sheet, uh, nice, like the Dural like that. And this has like been 20 or 15 years uh, and still working very, very well. Um, another tool that could maybe work uh, is that thing, the, the cutter like that. Um, but it's not the one that I recommend. Actually, the one that I recommend is the cheapest tool. It's like, it's that thing. Uh, it's like five bucks. And it's it just have like a, a 90 degrees angle just over here, and uh, it does the job. It, it's made for that. It works flawlessly. All you have to do is after you draw your, your line, you just have to cut like that and a couple thing, and after that you just snap it, and that's it. Super easy, super cheap, no brainer. That thing you uh, work really well. All right, so now for the silicone, it, this is the one that I use, the SCS 1200. It worked very well for fresh water or for reef uh, salt water. Uh, it worked flawlessly. It, it, I never had any trouble with that, so I recommend that. This is the, the black one. Uh, in, in the description of the video, I put the clear, but I prefer to use the black one um, because it, it fits like with the, the black uh, acrylic sheet, so they, they fit together. Also, you need, you need the, to buy a, a gun, um, a pressure gun, whatever it's called. Sorry, I'm Canadian, so I don't really know how to use a gun. <laughs> now I have a special trick when you want to make a, like a clean edge on the silicone and the, the separator. I use the tape, blue tape like that. It's from a 3M. And uh, what I like about this one, actually is the, it's the, <laughs> the tape that I used when I was putting the wall. Uh, and what I like about that is like when you have, you put that on the crown, and you just want to remove it. There's no uh, sticky uh, residue of the glue of the, the tape. So it's, it's super easy to remove and it's just a temporary thing. So put that at first and then you put the silicone and then after that you just remove the tape and you're gonna have like a super clean uh, edge uh, border like that here. After this you can paint uh, the, the side uh, like this. I like to do this because you can hide whatever that you have like inside. Uh, usually what I do, I leave uh, the, the back clear like that so I can see uh, in the back seat if I have like any trouble uh, with something, there's a residue or something that is stuck so I can see uh, like this so it's a little tips like I just prefer to paint on the side like that and for painting, I use the Rust Alum uh, paint it's a matte one so it doesn't like uh, reflect too much uh, the, the light uh, I choose this uh, paint because it's not like a toxic uh, or too much toxic for, <laughs> for the aquarium and uh, because it's still like really plastic and stuff like that but uh, I consider this like super safe uh, I've been using like for years and I never had any trouble so uh, yeah I recommend this for the paint this is the, the matte one uh, it's really good and of course you're going to need uh, those things uh, I have no clue how you call this I call it like the back uh, scratcher like that because it's super useful but eventually you're gonna need like some rollers. Uh, this one has been used, uh, and I recommend this one because it's uh, really the the, the holes are really tiny, so the finish look very good. Uh, as you can see, it's matte and uh, the yeah, the finish is really really cool. Um, so yeah, the, the rollers uh, like that, and just put inside. That's it. After that, I use um, a dryer like that, the hair dryer. I never never in uh, 35 years used that. Uh, for my hair, I only, only use that for dry my stuff that are wet or like heat the car like with that. Uh, I never use, I don't know, like I'm not a girl, so. <laughs> uh. Sorry. And finally, we're going to buy some uh, egg cray like that. I have like a, I buy a sheet of like 24 by 48 inches. 
Um, and I use that because I want to use uh, in the back of the filter system and I just build like a, a, a two-way system where I can put like the phosphate, the, the carbon and stuff like that. So it's really simple and easy to use and the, the flow can go through the, the equipment. And also uh, we're going to buy the, the ties like that, the cable ties. Um, and yeah, like sometimes you have the black one, so I'm gonna just link it for the black one and just to uh, put all this uh, together. So a little tip number four, when you want to cut that piece of acrylic, make sure that you put your hand on the extremity of the acrylic sheet like that, this, let's say like it's a table, and then just snap it like that. And make sure that you did a lot of cutting over here, uh, and it will just work and snap correctly. Demonstration. <laughs> So tip number five, you're probably wondering what kind of space that you need to do just behind this uh, piece of acrylic. So basically, it was between the two biggest instruments that I was going to use for this uh, aquarium. It was the skimmer over here, and I had also the pump that is hard to see, sorry, with the reflection, uh, the return pump that is just over here. Basically, the skimmer was the biggest instrument, so I just measured to, to put just enough of space like this uh, for the skimmer. And basically the, the system over here, I knew that I could just cut just in case. So this was the, the biggest instrument. So basically just measure your biggest instrument and just leave a little bit of room for space and you're good to go. Now here's my plan. I have the input just on the upper right and it goes on the bottom, it goes to the left and goes back to the top and goes back to the left and then goes back to the return pump which will just go up to the aquarium with the another input. So that was my uh, basically my idea for this aquarium. So tip number six, there is an alternative to the silicone. It's called the adhesive acrylic. It's a little bottle, uh, which is like a little bit like a liquid, and it will just uh, bond the acrylic to another piece of acrylic together. So like that, you have like a super clean edge uh, compared to the like silicone where you have like all the, the thickness of it. Uh, but the silicone, if you do a mistake, you can just rip off the, the silicone and restart again. Where the adhesive, one, it's, uh, it's dry and it's bound, it, it's, it's stick together and you cannot redo it again. So it's another alternative. The silicone is still really good for the Allen one aquarium, like for Nano V uh, like that. Uh, it does the job because there's no uh, pressure from the back because the, there's water on that side and there's water uh, on that side. So there's no uh, big pressure. So the silicone is still relevant, but if you want to have like a super clean edge, you can go with the adhesive uh, acrylic. Uh -huh.
tip number seven, did you check your measurement? Did you check if it's what they were leaking? Does your separator fit inside of the cram? Does the hole are big enough? It's all this kind of question that you need to ask yourself before doing anything. Always test your stuff. When I did my cram, I made sure that uh, the pump, I wanted to know if the circulation was good, if I need the next no pump or not. At the end, I decided to go with the external pump. So the best thing you can do during this process of the DIY aquarium is before adding like the coal, the fish, the plants, or whatever you're going to put, is always check your stuff. Double check your stuff, triple check your stuff. And like that, you're gonna be sure that everything goes really smooth. So I hope you enjoyed this content so far. Uh, I'm going to do the part two next week, so don't miss that. It's gonna be like the critical uh, step because it's the filtration, it's uh, behind uh, the, the aquarium. So don't miss that. And uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.